Hi there, my name is Miss Townsend and I love math. Welcome to Math with Townsend. This video is for grade 9 academic students who are working on the measurement and geometry unit review and this is still part 1 of that unit on 2D measurement and it's our video number 2 about 2D measurement. So hopefully you saw video number 1 where we talked about the Pythagorean theorem. So we reviewed a little bit about some basic shapes and then we talked about how it at the high school academic level, you know, we very rarely deal with just basic shapes, but if we do, we might have to deal with right angle triangle. And so for, therefore, you have to know the Pythagorean theorem. And so remember the Pythagorean theorem is hypotenuse squared, meaning the side opposite the right angle. The length of that side squared is equal to the length of the base squared plus the length of the height squared. And remember the base and the height are simply defined as the two sides that meet at a 90 degree angle. And most of you know that the formula can be memorized like this. Just make sure you know that the C of this formula represents the hypotenuse. And we had done a couple questions together in that last video. So let's go on and look at some other questions related to triangles and Pythagorean theorem. So here's a good question. It says, Emelina makes toy sailboats as shown below. So here's the sailboat. And obviously there's a nice big triangular shaped sail. And it says determine the total area of the shaded sails. Okay, so have a look at this diagram. Press pause in the video and see if you can get the right answer that I'll show you in just a moment. So press pause. Okay, so to find the area of a triangle, we know that the formula is base times height divided by 2. And in order to use this formula, you need two sides that we can properly call base and height. And that means we need two lines that meet at a 90 degree angle. So the two sides or the two lines that meet at a 90 degree angle are the bottom here, which looks like 4 plus 4, it looks like 8 centimeters. And this line here, and we don't know the length of that line. So we can't use this formula yet because we don't know, I guess I'll call this height. We could say the base is eight, but we don't know the height. So what are we gonna do? Well, again, pretty clearly, if you cut this particular sail in half, you have a right angled triangle on this half, and you also have the same thing on the other half. So let's look more at that particular right angled triangle. So that right angled triangle, if we kind of pull it out from this diagram, has a bottom side of four, a hypotenuse of 11 and an unknown side. So we're going to label properly and use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of that unknown side. So um, in this case, C, the hypotenuse is 11. So I'm going to say that 11 squared is equal to 4 squared plus B squared. I'm immediately going to isolate B. So even before I use my calculator, I'm going to change this into 11 squared minus 4 squared. So that's 121 minus 16, square root that. And again, do that in your calculator. You should get 10.2 centimeters. That's the length of side B. And if we go back to our original diagram, this is now the height of the sailboat. So instead of I don't know, now I know that it is 10.2. So again, let's clean up the diagram a little and, and reset our brain here a little. Here's the original shape. And to find the area of it, we needed to use this formula, base times height divided by 2. So we said, well, let's call this base. It's 8 centimeters. Here's the right angle. So therefore, this must be the height. And now we know that it's 10.2. So now we can use the area formula pretty quickly. So area equals base times height divided by 2. So in your calculator, do that math. And you should get 40.8 centimeters squared and the squared is because it's an area question. Okay, so hopefully that's what you got and let's look at another question. So this question said Arnold is building a triangular garden as shown in the diagram. Um, one edge of the garden is edged with pre-existing fence. So if you look down here, I guess there's the fence. Um, the other two edges will be edged with border stones. So here's those border stones. Each stone measures 25 centimeters in length. How many stones does Arnold need? Okay, so obviously it's pretty clear that this is a right angle triangle. 
So what I need to do is I need to figure out how, what is the length of this side and what is the length of this side because those are the two sides that get the stones. And once I know how long those sides are, I can then start to figure out how many stones he needs. So what I want you to do now is I want you to press pause on the video and I want you to figure out the length of this side. Okay, that's given, it was 2.7 and also the length of this side. So I'll meet you back here. Okay, so pretty clearly again, a right angled triangle. So this side is the hypotenuse, I'll call this A and B. And so using the Pythagorean theorem, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So C squared equals So I like to do more than a little bit in my calculator, but I'll show you all the steps. So 3.2 squared, 10.24, 2.7 squared is 7.29. Add those together. 17.53, and then of course take the square root and I get 4.2. So, and that would be in meters. So the length of this side is 4.2. So keep going with the question. The question said, how many stones do I need? And again, we're only putting stones on this side and this side. So let's find the total length. Um, so the total length to be covered in stones. Because remember that one side is already got a fence on it. So 2.7 plus 4.2. So the total length to be covered in stones is 6.9 meters. Okay, now we know that each stone covers 25 centimeters. So how do we do that? Well, there's a bunch of different ways of thinking about this. Um, personally, I think that I'm going to turn 25 centimeters into how many meters that is, so 0.25 meters. And then I just have to do division. So if I have 6.9 meters and I'm dividing it into little stones and each stone is this big, then 6.9 divided into these stones means that I need um, 27.6 garden stones. Now, if you go into a garden store, do you really think you can buy 27.6? Probably not. So I'm going to say, therefore, Arnold needs about 28 stones. Okay? So when it's a question that relates to something, in this case, garden stones, make sure you don't give me decimal answers when it's not reasonable in the real world to get decimal values. Good. So next question. Okay, so here's a good question, definitely for the academic level. It says, Luke designs a garden in the shape of a right triangle as shown below. Well, you're gonna notice there's an awful lot of garden questions, but you know, c'est la vie. Um, so here's that garden. And again, you can see the right angled triangle. And it says the total area of the garden is 96 meters squared. Um, which is closest to the value of x in the diagram. So I'm not sure what they mean by that. So let's just rearrange that and say, what is x or solve for x? Um, I Actually, I think this question was taken from the EQAO, um, which is a great resource for extra questions. Um, so this was probably originally a multiple choice question. So instead of a multiple choice question, I'm gonna make it just solve for x. So press pause on the video and see if you can do this math, and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so you'll notice that they gave you a hint and they gave you the area formula, but what they didn't do is give you the nicer version. So don't forget, you have the right to use whichever formula you like. In this case, I'm gonna use area equals base times height divided by two. So look at your triangle, here's height and base, and I know that because they meet at a 90 degree angle. So area, equals base times height divided by two. And I don't know what X is, but I do know what the area is. 
I know the area is 96. So instead of writing area, I can say 96 equals base times height divided by 2. And once I've written this, this is now just a solve for x equation, and it doesn't matter that this was a garden two-dimensional measurement question. So let's do the math. First of all, I don't like dividing by 2. I don't like fractions in my equation, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. So 2 times 96 and 2 times x, 3x over 2. So on the right side of the equation, this 2 just cancels this 2. Over here, I can do 2 times 96. So 2 times 96 is 102. And here I have x times 3x. So I finally need to do polynomials right now. So before I go any further, I better multiply these together. So x times 3x is 3. x times x is x squared. Good. So now I'm going to continue solving for x. So I need to get rid of divide by 3. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And that gives me 34. So x squared is 34. How do you get rid of x squared? Well, the opposite of x squared is, hold on. The inverse or opposite of x squared is square root. So on both sides, I'm going to square root. And what happens is here on the right, square root and squared cancel each other out. And in my calculator, the square root of 34 is 5.8. So the value of x is 5.8. And let's make sure that we need to get units. Well, if the area is in meters, then the units must be in meters. So 5.8 meters. Okay, so one more question on Pythagorean theorem, and then we'll move on to the rest of this unit. So here's the final question. I think it's the final question. Yes, it is. Just checking. Okay, so here's what the question says. It says, consider the following triangle, and it gives me, obviously, a right angle triangle. It calls this base. So here's the hypotenuse, and I guess we would call this height. And it says, which expression can be used in the process of determining the length of the base? So this is a multiple choice question. One of these expressions will be used if you were to find base. So I'm going to pause. I'm going to ask you to pause the video and see if you can get the right answer. OK, so certainly this is a question where you might be able to get the answer right away, and that's a great thing if you can. If not, you take your piece of scrap paper. So if this was the EQAO, you would have scrap paper, and act as if you're actually trying to find the base. So I would call this C, A, and B. And so the Pythagorean theorem looks like this. If I substitute in, I get 16 squared equals 3.5 squared plus B squared. And then I always say the next step is to do subtraction. So 16 squared minus 3.5 squared equals b squared. And if you stop right there, you'll see that this is exactly what a says. So if you have to just do the math and look at the answer, that's fine. Um, you should have also known the answer because these two, c and d, aren't squaring anything. So we know that that's not part of Pythagorean theorem. B the plus sign would only make sense if 16 was not the hypotenuse. But since 16 isn't the hypotenuse, I don't add, I subtract. So maybe you could get that right away, or maybe you needed to do the math. Either way, hopefully you knew that the correct answer was A. So that's all the practice I'm going to give you on Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to stop this video here. Look for video number three, where we continue to talk in more in general about two-dimensional measurement. See you there.